okay so section 7.2 estimating a population mean this is a very similar section to the previous one in previous section uh, we estimate a population proportion using sample proportion in this section we estimate population mean using the sample mean uh, so that's the goal and then we talk about the confidence interval and sample size as well so this is the very very important uh, slide you have to keep in mind there are two different cases we're going to discuss the first one is if you don't know the standard deviation for the actual population and uh, if these are the two cases in, um, if you have um, these two cases one if the normal you know the actual population is normally distributed then you are going to use this formula for finding margin of error where this score is called t score which is for the student to dist t distribution which is very similar to the g score but the difference is difference is for finding the g score if you remember this is the you know this is the formula we use for g score and for the t score we use um, this one as a formula because in this case we don't know the standard deviation for the population so we have to use the standard deviation for the sample and divided by square root of n where n is the sample size so that's the difference so if you don't know the standard deviation for the population and if one of these situations um, you know either of them is true then you can use this formula for for finding the margin of error but if you do know the standard deviation for the population and either your uh, original population is normally distributed or the sample size is greater than 30 then this is the formula you are going to use for finding the margin of error after finding the margin of error finding the you know confidence interval is easy which is uh, you know the sample sample mean minus margin of error and sample mean plus margin of error that gives you lower bound and upper bound so the only difference is which formula we have to use that's what we are going to learn or discuss in this section in case if your original data is not normally distributed and then sample size is also less than 30 then this section is not going to help us for finding the solution for that we have to go further and this is the case we are not going to discuss in this course okay so that's the difference so what is the objective objective is uh, construct the confidence interval and then first we start with uh, without uh, if we don't know the standard deviation for the population mean these are the symbol we use and uh, there are the requirements you have to verify before we do the any problems you know the sample is supposed to be simple random and um, at least um, one of the conditions supposed to be true like the population is normally distributed or at least the sample size is greater than 30. so in that case we can find uh, the confidence interval by finding this margin of error we can use this notation that's called df which is also called degree of freedom which can be found by subtracting one from the sample size we can use the stat crunch for finding all this information so um, like we did in section 7.1 okay the meaning of confidence interval is very very similar to uh, the section 7.1 the only difference uh, from section 7.1 is here we use t score instead of g score okay and uh, the round of uh, er rule is also same this is the formula i was talking about uh, for the t score and uh, the distribution of this uh, t it's called a student t distribution so key points about the student t distribution first this is the formula for the t score the degree of freedom is actually uh, n minus 1 and then for finding the critical value for the t score which is actually the very similar to the g score is the is the value for which the area to the right side of that value is alpha over 2 how do you find this value there are different ways to do it like in previous section we use a stat crunch and i'm going to show you how to use the stat crunch for that what is the difference between the t distribution uh, and then student t distribution and normal distribution so the difference is 
when uh, the value of the sample size is very 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 large this t distribution becomes uh, the normal distribution a standard normal distribution okay so that's the difference so the student t distribution has the same general symmetric bell set as you can see here for different n value we can see the same symmetric bell set the student t distribution has the mean zero uh, and then uh, normal distribution has mean uh, of g is equal zero and here we use notation t for the normal distribution we use the g score for the student uh, t distribution we use the t score for the normal distribution the mean is uh, uh, the standard deviation of this uh, student t distribution it's different than one okay when n which is sample size it's get bigger the t distribution is actually becomes the normal distribution so that's the difference okay so keep in mind we have we need to verify either the original population should be normal or uh, the sample size has to be greater than 30 and then this is the formula for finding the e and then after finding the margin of error we can construct the confidence interval so one more thing if you have given confidence interval let's say lower limit and then upper limit you can find uh, the population mean and then margin of error by doing this this is upper limit plus lower limit divided by two if you go back to uh, this interval as you can see here if you add these two number and divide by two that gives you uh, the point estimate of um, it's supposed to be x bar here that's the point estimation for the population mean and this is if you subtract upper limit a lower limit from the upper limit and divide it by two that gives you margin of error the way we did in section 7.5 one for finding the margin of error okay so let's look at some um problems um and keep in mind if uh the standard deviation population standard deviation is known then uh way we uh, we try to find uh, the you know confidence interval is similar to the previous um section uh we find the g score and uh from there we find the uh, uh, confidence interval which is uh, you know similar to the previous sections I'm going to show you some examples here and we also can find the sample size there are two different uh, the, this is the first formula if you know the population standard deviation then this is the formula you're going to use and if you don't know the population standard deviation uh, then what is that unknown uh, population standard deviation in that case the range rule of thumb is uh, the standard deviation is uh, approximately range divided by 4 okay if we don't know the uh, population standard deviation okay so that's the that's for the sample size okay where is that did I miss something here no so let's look at some examples Okay, let's start with some uh, checkup questions. Last few questions are checkup questions. Fill in the blank. The number of, for a collection of sample data is the number of sample values that can vary after certain restriction have been imposed on the, on all data values. So num the number of uh, what is that degree of freedom for a collection of sample data is the number of sample values uh, degree of freedom means it's n minus 1 which of the following is not a property of a string t distribution so the string t distribution has the same general symmetric bell shape that's right the string t distribution is different for different sample size this is also right the standard deviation of a string t distribution is 1 that's not true okay okay what is this uh, the blank is the best point estimate of population mean so sample mean is the best point estimation of the population mean what is the which of the following is not correct so this is the sample mean upper confidence upper confidence uh, this is not true okay which of the following would be correct interpretation of 99% confidence interval 
So we are 99% confident that the interval from 4.1 to 5.6 actually does contain the true value of mu. So that is right. Okay, which of the following is not an equivalent expression for the confidence interval? So where is that? Which one is not uh, equivalent expression? So can you find out 13.9? Uh, okay, this one is not... Uh, if you add 16, uh, 180, eight point this is also right 161.7 to 189.5 this is also right 175 plus 187 this is also right this is not right what is happening here what did i miss look at here uh, this value whatever value you get uh, if you subtract that value, that's supposed to be 161.7 and 175.6 uh, I need to use calculator here. So let's let me check. What is that? 161.7.7 minus sorry minus uh no 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 the first one i need to take 175.6 minus 13.9 that's what did i do okay let me start with this 175.6 minus 13.9 that gives me 161.7 175 Point six plus thirteen point nine that gives me one eighty nine point five so that is right that's right so now let's go to and uh, this is also right this is also right this is also right this is not right you can check that one sixty one point seven if you plus or minus this is not the range you are going to get. So I did not do the calculation and I was just checking in my head. So, you know, head and then I did the mistake. So it's always use the calculator. Okay. Which of the following is not required to determine minimum sample size? The desired confidence level. So for the sample size, what do you need? This is a formula for the sample size. And uh, in this formula, you have margin of error. You have a standard deviation. You have the G score, which is confidence level. So the size of the population, it's not required. Okay, so these are some background check. Let's do some examples. Question number one, refer to this data here. Uh, uh, okay, from a sample, uh, ran simple random sample of times in minutes between eruption of the old faithful geyser, the confidence level of 95% was used complete a through b so what is your lower bound and upper bound so as you can see here this is already given so lower bound is 85.85.74 and then upper bound is 91.76 so that's already given here okay identify the best point estimate of population mean this is the best point estimate of population mean which is uh, sample mean 88.75 that's the base point estimation for the population mean what is the margin of error so here as you can see the margin of error is not given directly but you can find the margin of error by using this formula the margin of error is upper confidence interval minus lower confidence interval divided by 2 if you go to this problem the upper confidence interval is 91 point uh, 91 point uh, where is that 91.76 minus 85.74 and divide that by 2 that gives you margin of error 3.01 3.01 okay that's done let's go to the next problem 
Now, this is the problem we have given. A clinical trial was conducted to test the effectiveness of a drug for treating uh, insomnia in older subjects. Before treatment, 20 subjects had a mean wake time of 101 minutes. So this is before uh, experiment. After treatment, 20 subjects had a mean wake time of 97.7. So that's, after, that's the sample, okay? And a standard deviation is 22.9 minute. So a standard deviation is known. Assume that that's a standard deviation is for the sample, not for the population. Assume that 20 sample values appear to be from a normally distributed population. So it's from normally distributed population. So we can use the formula we have given, which is uh, which one? Let's go back to the first one. So the standard deviation is not known and then um, the population is normally distributed. This is the formula we can use for finding uh, the margin of error. And after finding the margin of error, we can find confidence interval by using this formula. But if you use um, stat crunch, it can be all done in the stat crunch. So how do you solve this kind of problem? Assume that 20 sample values appear to be from a normally distributed population and construct a 90% confidence interval. Estimate of the mean wake time for a population with drug treatments. What does the result suggest about the mean wake time of 101 minute before the treatment? So if you go here and go to the stat crunch, this time go to the stat and go to the T stat. T stat means that's the T score we're talking about. Go to one sample, go with summary, okay? And then fill out this information here. So what we have given? In this problem, the sample mean we got after that experiment, the sample mean, as you can see here, it's a 97.7. Sample is standard deviation, that's uh, 22.9. Sample size, that's a 20. And now we would like to find out the confidence interval for uh, the confidence level 90%. And after filling out all this information, if you compute it, it's, it, it's going to give you uh, the lower limit, upper limit for the confidence interval. And this is the sample mean 97.7. It's already given there, so we don't need that. So now what is the confidence um, interval? 88.8 .8 for the lower limit, 88.8 .8 for the lower limit, and 106.6, 106.6 for the upper limit. Keep in mind, all this calculation, this margin of error and everything, it's done in the background. So you don't have to do it manually if you are using start crunch, okay? Now, what does the result suggest about the mean wake time of 101? Look at here, 101 mean wake time is in between here. So the confidence interval includes the mean wake time of 101 minute, no problem with that. So the means before and after the treatment uh, could be the same. This result suggests that drug treatment does not have an effect. Look at here, before the treatment, also it was 101 and after the treatment also our estimated estimation is in between these two numbers so our confidence you know uh, we the, this result suggests that the drug treatment does not have any effect because of that because it's uh, you know that uh, that mean is already in that uh, that interval let's go to the next problem i want to choose something where you have data so problem like this a food safety guideline is that the mercury in fish should be below one part per million ppm. That's the unit for the mercury. Listed below, listed below are the amounts of mercury found in tuna sushi sampled at different stores in a major city. Construct a 98% confidence interval estimate of the mean amount of mercury in the population. Does it appear that there is too much mercury in tuna sushi? To answer this question, start, uh, you know, open your uh, data in the stat crunch, go to this stat, go to the T stat, 
go to the one sample with the data this time with the data choose your data and now choose the confidence interval and change your confidence level which is in this case it's a 98 percent and if you hit compute it's going to give you your lower limit and upper limit so as you can see here the lower limit is 0 0.27 8 so 0.278 that's the lower limit what's the upper limit 1.162 uh, 1.162 that's the upper limit okay now what was the question here uh, does it appear that there is too much mercury in the tuna sushi uh, you know the mercury it's supposed to be uh, below 1 but it's in between 0.27 to 1.16 so does it appear that there is too much mercury in tuna sushi uh, yes it is possible that the mean is greater than 1 also at least one of the sample values exit 1 pm so at least some of the fish have too much mercury there are two different assays so let's read the second one yes because it is possible that the mean is not greater than 1 pm uh, 1 ppm uh, this one is the right one the reason as you can see here it's supposed to be the mean supposed to be less than 1 but according to our confidence interval it could be greater than 1 so that's the only option we have now one question for the sample size an IQ test is designed so that mean is 100 and standard deviation is 70 for the population of normal adults find the sample size necessary to estimate the mean IQ score of statistics students such that it can be said with 99% confidence that the sample mean is within four IQ points of the true mean. Assume that standard deviation, population standard deviation is 17 and determine the required sample size using technology. So keep in mind, uh, for this section, there is a formula for finding the sample size and that is this one. So you need to find the G-score and then you have to multiply that by standard deviation given and then you have to divide that by margin of error. So if you go back to this problem, as you can see here, so what is your um, G-score for 99%? You can find the G-score using the technology. How do you find the margin of error? So the margin of error can be found by using this one. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So the first of all, find and the G-score, G-score alpha over two, and then margin of error, which is, uh, what is the margin of error? G score times this one and then finally after finding this value use this formula for n it's a G score times uh, what is that times uh, standard deviation divided by e whole square so these are the three things we need to find so let's do that how do you find it go to the problem here go to start crunch and uh, first of all for finding the g-score go to the calculator go to the normal distribution because it's a g-score it's a normal distribution uh, go to calculator normal distribution and now as you know the standard uh, the confidence level is where is the confidence level 99 percent so we would like to find out the g-score such that the area under the curve to the right side of uh, uh, what is that the right side of the curve is uh, half alpha over 2 is half so this area is half which is 0 0.005 the g score is 2.576 2.576 so I'm going to put that thing 2.576 if I round it to the three decimal place now I can calculate e by using this g score times standard deviation in this problem is given if you look at here the standard deviation is 17 and then um, uh, is that the case yeah standard deviation is 17 so okay no I don't have to calculate this margin of error I just need this uh, because the margin of error is also given here um, uh, confidence that sample mean is within four IQ points so the four point zero four four percent is the margin of error so don't be confused because to use this formula you need the sample size you don't know the sample size so you cannot use this one but you have given the value of margin of error which is 
0.04. I use 0.04 because it's a four sample points. That means 4% margin of error. So now I'm going to use this value here, 2.576 times 17 divided by 0.04 and square this value. And that's how we can calculate uh, the value. So look at here, 2.576 times 17 divide by 0 0.04 and then square that value which is uh, if you round it to the nearest whole number round to up to the nearest whole number so that's uh, 1 million 1.2 million I'm just going to copy that one two zero 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 seven seven one two triple zero seven six because you have to round it to the nearest uh, round up to the nearest integer it's going to be seven seven what happened let me double check okay what did i do wrong it might happen so this is the this is the form what is the formula this is the formula what did i do wrong oh oh okay i'm so sorry i inst okay the I, I i got i understand so if you go back to the problem look at here uh go back to the problem here this margin of error is for iq because the points are given as a hundred and seventeen it's not as a percentage so we need to use this margin of error as a as a point as a, as a value not as a uh, percentage so uh if i do that uh, let me go back to the formula. This is the formula. Um, so our margin of error is 4. So just use 4 here. If I use 4, then that would be 2.576 times 17 divided by 4 and then square that number. It's 120. So it's supposed to be 120. So my bad, I assume that is in the percentage, but uh, even the original data, it's not in term of percentage. So the margin of error is also not in percentage. Would it be reasonable to sample this number of students? Uh, yes, the number of IQ test score is fairly large number. Uh, so IQ test score 100 and then standard deviation is 17 for the population normal. Okay. Uh, would it be reasonable to sample this number of students? Yes, uh, this number of IQ test score is fairly small number. This number of IQ test score, this number of IQ test score is fairly small number. Uh, this number of IQ test score is fairly large number. No, this number of IQ test score is fairly large number. No, no. Okay, this one. It's very fairly small number, 120. So that's the answer. Okay.